Hi there, Nicole here today for the Waffle Flower channel. This is It's In The Details, and today I'm sharing a no-line watercolored balloon card. This is showcasing some awesome stamp sets from Waffle Flower. This is the balloon letters and the congrats stamp sets. The balloons are from both of those, as well as greetings and the great celebrate die cut. I've also included some stamping on the inside of the card to finish the design. No line watercolor is really easy when you use distress inks. I am not the world's best watercolor, but I have found that with distress inks, I can make some really incredible things. What I like to do is stamp the images with the color of distress ink that I want the image to be. In this instance, I want the balloons um, to be in shades of reds and pinks and purples. While I made this a birthday card, this would absolutely be incredible for a Valent Valentine's Day themed card as well. The theme really could go for any kind of occasion, any sort of celebration or thing or event like that, occasion like that. I just chose I needed a birthday card, so I went with the birthday theme with this. But stamp the image with the color you want to use, and then I like to use a water brush, but you could also use a paintbrush dipped in water to pull that color from the line out into the image, as well as I like to press my ink pad on an acrylic block and pick up some of that additional color to darken the design with my water brush pen. The water brush has this really awesome fine tip that makes it really easy to stay within the lines on a design. So that's really kind of the benefit of this, but I have done it with a fine tip paintbrush as well, and you get great results. Now this lightest pink balloon is stamped with sponge sugar, but I really felt well, and I had some cross contamination. Some of that wilted violet got into that. I really felt it was too light. So I did start by kind of pulling that spun sugar out, but then I grabbed a tiny bit of picked raspberry and blended it into this balloon. So it's kind of a, two different shades together, but you can see the picked raspberry balloon to the left there kind of down and to the left, and how much different this balloon, the spun sugar balloon, looks from the just picked raspberry balloon. Gives you a different color, so you can definitely mix and match different colors to get different shades and things like that. This is another picked raspberry balloon, so again, much, much darker. I went lighter with some additional balloons. I did stamp a few more. They were all colored exactly the same, just playing with the amount of water I use as opposed to the ink. You could definitely maybe stamp these with a very, very light color for no line watercolor and paint them with traditional watercolors as well if you prefer to do that. So what I like to do is let them air dry because I just really love the look of water coloring when it's air dried. But if you're in a hurry, you can totally hit it with a heat gun as well. I've got a background trimmed slightly smaller than A2 sized and I am going to blend the Wilted Violet, Picked Raspberry and Spun Sugar inks together on this background. I wanted everything to coordinate really well but I want my background to definitely have some distressing and other elements so that the balloons are really the star of this card. I'm gonna spritz it with water from a distress sprayer then, blot it dry with a paper towel, and you can see there's some great distressing there already. But to make it even more fun, I'm gonna add some second generation stamping to the background with the XOXO and the small heart from the Balloon Messages stamp set. So using picked raspberry and the wilted violet inks, I'm stamping them off on my scrap paper first, and then taking that second generation image, so the lighter image, which will be what you get with the second generation, and stamping that all over the background, giving some really great, very light images to the background, adding a lot of interest. Same thing with the hearts. In fact, I think I even used a third generation stamped heart down near the bottom, excuse me, um, to make it even lighter because it's so much lighter near the bottom and I definitely don't want it to be too dark as it goes from dark to light. 
I'm gonna start attaching my balloons. I've laid them all out so that I have an idea where I want them to go because I need to be able to stamp the balloon strings. So I've got the first ones down and I'm going to take a balloon strings image from the balloon messages and stamp that with the Like a Pro ink all across the background. Again, I'm gonna kind of lay out my greetings. I've got a greeting from the congrats stamp set that I'll stamp with some black ink. I'll save the celebrate for a little bit yet. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start attaching the rest of my balloons. I'm using a combination of a glue adhesive or a glue runner adhesive and glue dots to attach my balloons just kind of depending on which images I'm putting where. Lots of layering going on, but I wanna kind of be conscious of where I'm gonna be stamping the balloon strings for this second kind of row of balloons. Again, I will move my die out of the way. I'm just gonna mask off the stamped greeting because I don't want any of the balloon strings going through it with some post-it post tape. And I'm gonna stamp all my balloon strings and remove any excess and then trim off any of the balloons that overhang parts of my background panel. Hanging off the sides of the background panel really helps ground the whole image. So there you can see the masked off image. I think it makes it more legible to read than having those balloon strings go through the greeting. I've got a piece of fun foam here that I am backing with Stick It adhesive. I love to do this so I have a dimensional adhesive, or a dimensional die cut rather. It makes it really easy with the fun foam. This makes it a sticker. I like to just kind of run it through my big shot. That's going to make sure the adhesive really sticks to the fun foam. And then I'm gonna remove the backing paper and go ahead and adhere some watercolor cardstock to one side and run it through with the Celebrate die. This is gonna create that dimensional greeting die cut. And by die cutting it from a solid paper like white cardstock or watercolor cardstock, you can customize it, which is my favorite part of this technique. I love to do this. So I'm going to be adding some color to it with my Distress inks to perfectly match my balloons. Just gonna stick it here on some plastic paper that I can easily peel it off of. Before I add the color, you could do this afterwards as if you wanted to, or you could even leave them inside. All of those little pieces inside the loops kind of tend to get stuck. Um, they are die cut all the way, but they're so teeny tiny, they just kind of stick in there. So I like to take a paper piercing tool and just kind of push them all out. You could use a straight pin or something else similar to get all of those little pieces out. Then I'm just gonna lay it here on my plastic. Um, the Ranger craft mat would work great too. I couldn't find mine, I'll be honest. <laughs> I don't know where I put it, um, but that is usually what I use. Um, I'm gonna add color with the Wilted Violet and picked Raspberry Distress Ink. So Wilted Violet along the top, kind of copying the feel of my background. And then once that's done, I did go ahead and take a paper towel and kind of blot any excess ink off so that my fingers didn't smudge it. Um, it will dry eventually, the ink will. Just kind of at first it stays pretty wet since it works with water so well. And then I'm gonna simply take it and attach it to my card. It's sticky, which it makes it so easy. No liquid glue, no liquid glue mess. I love that. Once that's done, I'm gonna take a white pen and just go over the highlight details on the heart balloons. Those really kind of blended out with my water pen when I applied the color. Adds a little bit of interest to the balloons. I could even go and do that to the, the uh, more traditional balloon shape, but I didn't for this card. I'm going to attach some sequins and iridescent star confetti to my background as well just to lend to the whole really pretty feel of this card. 
I'm attaching the confetti with some Ranger multi matte medium using the quick stick tool to pick up those little star pieces and place them in the Ranger multi matte medium. I used bling glue dots to attach the sequins because they're so teeny tiny. Anytime I can get away with not using liquid adhesive, I do that. I like to use the clear end of the quick stick tool, not the sticky end. Those little confetti pieces will stick to it. They're kind of clingy. And I find that it works so much better for placing all of those confetti pieces exactly where you want them to go. And that way I don't get my fingers in it and don't make a mess of the glue, which I am prone to do if I would do it a different way. Once I have all of those little pieces there, I am gonna go ahead and take a card base. I'm gonna grab my panel, flip it over, and I'm gonna back the entire thing with foam adhesive. This is gonna give the whole panel just a little bit more dimension. There's not a ton of dimension on the card. I love trying to find ways to create dimension without making the card super bulky. It's going to mail so much better this way. I will go ahead and take my panel, attach it to my card base. And then I'm simply going to take a greeting from the balloon messages stamp set and stamp the happy birthday on the inside of the card to finish the design. Thanks for joining me today for this card showcasing the waffle flower congrats balloon messages stamp sets and the celebrate die. For more product information, please visit waffleflower.com. Follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook for more creative ideas.